All right, we got ourselves a dev diary from Creative Assembly covering a lot of the goods that are coming our way from version 1.1 of Total War Warhammer 3. And just to kind of give you a bit of a Sparks note, an upfront breakdown of what's going to be coming here. Uh, the big one, of course, is a total, not necessarily an overhaul or a change, but definitely an, a tweaking to the way that the Chaos Realms work. You will feel less pressure to go in. You can actually block rifts from being built in your territory using defensive buildings, and they actually reduced the overall intensity of the uh, the marks that you get when you're in the Realm of Chaos, and a lot of other goodies that we'll go into in just a little bit. Um, we get some unit balancing, mainly focused on Ogre Kingdoms, bringing them down a notch, and Cathay, bringing them up. Um, improvements to a lot of the crash bugs, especially the alt tab one, and a lot of cool tweaks to stuff like um, the way the AI works when you're moving through the actual battlefield. They've done a little uh, a little tweaking there to make the AI match up more closely to Total War Warhammer 2. And probably the biggest portion of these patch notes, or well, this, this preview of the patch notes is that the intention here is to roll out Steam Workshop support with version 1.1. That means mods are coming to Warhammer 3. So hopefully a ton of the things that we already want turned off or turned on on the game, we can have done through the mod mods and Steam Workshop and a ton of other customizations and fun stuff being added in will come soon enough. So let's go through these patch notes. If that's all you wanted to know, there you go. There's your down and dirty breakdown of what's coming here in 1.1. Like I said, this is only a brief kind of snapshot at what is coming our way. We don't know 100% just yet these are just kind of uh the, the high watermark i guess is that even a term high watermark this is the high point these are the things that people want to know <laughs> so let's go through this list here um and again uh, one thing to be transparent with up front there are there is no word there is no news about a more immortal empires the blood dlc or any future roadmap they've said hey we want to make an actual stable game before we even get to that point but when we are adjusting our roadmap accordingly which we will then share once we get to again that point so again that is your down and dirty breakdown that's two minutes 12 seconds 13 seconds of your life that you uh now have back you don't need to keep watching if you don't want to but for those that want to get into the nitty-gritty let's keep on pursuing this we'll just kind of squeeze on down here so again like i said this is pretty much them just saying that the immortal empires and the blood pack any other dlc kind of announcements they will be put on hold until the game is in a more stable point um, it seems like patch 1.1 is that stable point uh barring any kind of massive uh issues with 1.1's rollout i would imagine that we'd start to see stuff like the blood pack or the immortal empires um roadmap or at least projected release dates uh, shared with us so again like i said the game needs to be in a solid place before we consider adding new content and features to the mix so we're in the process of reviewing the release timing of both immortal empires and the blood pack speaking of blood pack that's pretty sick looking indie pride use it for his thumbnail what does he know that indie pride gosh he's so hot right now all right patch 1.1 <laughs> preview so again these are some of the big things that they're focusing on for design uh, i'm sorry our design improvements gameplay fixes and fundamental changes prioritizing based on the feedback we've seen since launch here are some of those changes now with the realm of chaos there are more things that are being done but these are again just those really big high high level ones the strength of the negative realm traits has been reduced by 50 percent roughly demon legendary lords will no longer be burdened by the negative traits of their respective patron god which i really really like you know it didn't really make much sense that if i'm going through a scar brand and i'm in the realm of corn why am i getting the well i mean okay lore wise with scar brand it makes sense but okay we'll take a look at kugoth plague father why am i getting the negative trait of that uh that respective patron god in their realm you know so it, it makes a little bit more continuity sense here traits gain in the realm of chaos will now be removed when a legendary lord completes a survival battle within that realm which i think is a really cool kind of nice reward you finish it you get that trait removed if you don't finish it then you've got to deal with those traits and remove them yourself when a player intercepts an ai lord at the forge of souls the forge of souls is after they've gotten all of the respective demon souls and they're trying to put a make a push towards the final um, fight of the game you can stop them there you can intercept them so their souls will now be lost when you intercept them so forcing them to restart their collection this should make it easier to disrupt the souls race the protection building chain can now be used to prevent rifts from spawning in the province in which they're built which is just lovely to hear about the rewards for gaining souls have been improved by providing additional bonuses for a limited period of time so 
gives you a little boost. Doesn't feel as anticlimactic after you win this massive survival battle. Then it's like, cool, well, go go about your business now. And we'll, you actually now get a little bit of a boost, which is quite nice. And like I said here, these changes are intended to make the Souls race less urgent and give you the chance to approach the battlefield in a different ways. So you could completely ignore the Souls race and then finally jump on at the very end to stop the AI from doing it and then just keep going about your business. So I do like that there is less urgency there and you don't feel as penalized going into it. You can maybe skip the first one entirely if you want and not feel like you're behind the curve because the AI is just going to cheat their way through it. So I do like that a lot. Um, I wonder if they will be tweaking some of the ways that the AI approaches, say, the realm of Zinch, in which case there are a lot of issues there. But it says right here, we will, of course, continue to adjust the mechanics in the future, but look forward to seeing how these changes impact your experience as you jump into after jump in after 1.1. The supply lines bug has been hopefully fixed. Infantry responsiveness has hopefully been fixed. It says right here, uh, should improve the rate of responsiveness to roughly match in Total War Warhammer 2. We'll have to work to continue improving the AI behavior in combat. We'll have more news about this in future updates that we'll share with you later. <laughs> Now with faction balances, what's kind of tricky when you have a game that's got a, a very active PvP mode, um, you tend to have a lot of balancing that actually kind of makes PvE or just the single player campaign a little more cumbersome. Like units that you were thought were were either underperforming in single, single player or performing just fine, now underperform or you just they're now just disgustingly overpowered, whatever it is. So unfortunately, what they're looking at here is, for the perspective, here's a look at the win rates in ranked matchmaking and multiplayer. So, and they've even said right here, you know, this is a fine balance, fine balance to walk between how strong a faction is perceived versus how they perform on the battlefield. And really what they're looking at, like I said, is ranked matchmaking and domination mode for how they're getting the statistics of what to nerf and what to buff. And the consensus here is between these two uh, breakdowns. So the Ogre Kingdoms in general are overperforming heavily in both ranked matchmaking and tournaments. We are making some significant adjustments to the units based on community feedback and our metrics. And this is true. The Ogres are just disgustingly strong in multiplayer. With Grand Cathay, though, is currently by far the biggest underperformer in ranked matchmaking and in domination tournaments. We think that Cathay is best when their army is large, such as in land battles, which is why we are increasing the size of all starting armies in domination. We'll be monitoring these changes to see how the meta progresses in the months ahead. So it should be very interesting to see how this works. Kislev is slightly underperforming, but they're going to see how uh, increasing everything kind of affects Kislev. Um, Nurgle, of course, though, is a bit of an issue has been doing well in ranked matchmaking. However, we know they don't do well in the tournament environment. We're also concerned that the slowness of most Nurgle units make them vulnerable to larger armies with ranged firepower, which can result in heavy losses before the Nurgle units are able to engage in melee combat. And I personally find Nurgle to be, even single player, so slow to the point that I'm like, oh man, this is just, I, I have to press fast forward and I might miss something. And I get that they're supposed to be slow from a lore standpoint and from a tabletop standpoint it makes sense but i feel like they are slower than dwarfs and the, they were the same speed as dwarfs i believe actually i think they maybe moved three inches around four inches in um an in actual tabletop but regardless my point is nurgle feels way too slow i want them to be slow and cumbersome and have a bunch of health but i feel like to the point where when you've played, if you play the Nurgle campaign, even playing in some of the initial portions of it, dude, you just get sniped apart by the dwarfs if you're not careful. Like Kugoth got completely minced apart by two units of uh, of rangers, uh, not rangers, crossbow dwarfs, which I can't think of off the top of my top of my head. But I mean, I definitely feel like Nurgle needs a little bit of a speed buff. Slanesh, they're not going to be touching because they want to see what happens after some of these changes with 1.1 before they even tweak it. And Corn is in a great spot, so they're not going to be touching it at all, really. Now for the bug fixes, we got the Alt Tab Crash Fix. We're aiming to have a Steam beta in your hands next week, and we will and we'll let you know as soon as it is available. To pay on its success, we'll bundle and share this with the rest of the community in update 1.1. A conflict between the Everlasting Gift Tech and Gift of Slanesh upgrade will be resolved in the update as well. Prologue sticks at the Battle of Fort Devengrad, and also Softlock when ending your turn after losing Yuri have both been fixed. A number of crash fixes as well. The Shadow Shroud, Velikor's ability Shadow Shroud, is now associated with his unique trait. And corrupted by, factions will now be able to remove negative corrupted by traits when in a region dominated by their favored corruption, which is quite nice. 
achievement issues, whether unlocking achievements the wrong way, not unlocking achievements at all, or unlocking duplicate achievements, we're implementing fixes for many of the achievements and of course more. Like I said, this is not a complete list. Uh, we'll be getting a lot more, hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, we, we know we'll be getting much more. We'll share a full list in 1.1 and encourage you to continue consolidating the bugs and other issues you find into the threads here on the forum or contacting our support team if you're experiencing any technical issues. But wait, there's more. Buy batteries. It comes with the vibrator. We'll be aiming to release the mod manager and enable workshop support alongside 1.1. This is so huge. This is massive i cannot wait for the modding community to just swarm this game because no we know that the modding community has put out so many amazing mods in warhammer 2 ahead of dlcs or even after dlcs that almost feels like it's actually from creative assembly like if you look at stuff like the um gosh not the not the croc cigar um the troglodon the troglodon mod before we actually got the unit in the game is is way too good. It's way too good to be just a mod. It's it's disgusting. So I'm very excited to see what's coming with those mods um, in Warhammer 3. Beyond 1.1, you know, they, they're saying right here, basically they're just pretty much going to say that they are, they, they are planning a different approach to patches. In the past with Warhammer 2, we got a major patch pretty much with every DLC. Towards the end of its life cycle, we got major patches outside of the DLCs because there were a lot of issues that were, that were existing. Now, they are changing that. So like Warhammer 2, our plan is to eventually pair large content drops with regular game updates, bug fixes, balance changes, and the sort. However, we are also looking to raise our game above Warhammer 2 by introducing major patch updates between our key DLCs. Um, allowing us to address bugs, balance concerns, and other adjustments on a quicker cadence than previous games. All of this is aimed at establishing a more reliable cadence of releases once we've established a strong foundation of the game and its future. So I'm all down for that. I'd love to see how that actually plays out, though. Really excited to see what happens. Um, if, if we have a set DLC schedule, then this is awesome. If we don't have a set DLC schedule, this can get scary because we've had six seven eight nine month um long content dirges and with that is of course the patch that fixes and changes the game within that so if they're saying hey we we dedicate a, a patch to a halfway point in between every dlc which is cool for everyone involved right like oh god we got a patch that means that we just look at the last patch and we double that time and oh we're, we got a dlc coming so there's some cool speculation that can happen from there but again it needs to be on some sort of regular cadence because Warhammer is a game that is very interesting when it comes to strategy games and in that it is played very actively after its launch. And again, most strategy games are like that. You look at Paradox games, they're like that. But Paradox has a very, at least somewhat reliable, or used to at least, reliable um, patch process. So I think it needs to happen here for Warhammer as it constantly evolves. It gets Regiment of Renown, new units, new lords, all this stuff. So we're going to need that constant kind of tweaking and, 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 and moving of the sliders here and there. Looking ahead to Warhammer 3 roadmap, again, they're just pretty much saying, you know, the what and when is going to be dependent upon how stable 1.1 is. So not really much to go into here. And again, here for the uh, closing out. And again, thank you all for your ongoing support and passion to see Warhammer 3 reach its full potential. There's certainly room to grow, but we're confident we'll get there with your feedback serving as guidance and with all we have planned to expand and grow the Total War Warhammer universe. Thanks to all of you who continue to be a part of the conversation, offer feedback with quality of the game at heart and help others who are having trouble playing the game game you're the core of this community and we will continue to be your biggest fans as we do we work to improve your game so hopefully these are not uh hollow words and they actually fall through uh fall through to uh, full fruition and we get a pretty solid 1.1 and we get a big boom back to the game because i think that really the the realm of chaos is a huge issue in the game right now and hopefully 1.1 balances out that need and feel and that sense of urgency to the point that you just don't really want to interact with realm of chaos beyond your first playthrough and even then if you're going through your first playthrough it feels so pressed right you could you could make one mistake and, and screw up your whole campaign not even know it until the very end and you've just wasted 150 160 turns ripping through stuff and you just get a tanked campaign so 
I'm excited to see how this all plays out. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you're feeling, what you're thinking. We got a video coming up here tomorrow for Koresh. So if you've been looking for some Koresh action, we got some lore for you. I also got another fun video here for Warhammer 3. I'm in the middle of a move, but I did want to cover this here really quick for you guys. So hopefully uh, we can get back to some regular content here in the coming week. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.